Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be going through the question on the screen. And the question says, Frida plays the lottery. There are 49 balls to choose from. The balls are numbered 1 to 49. Frida chooses the six numbers shown below in the order in which they appear. John believes the numbers were chosen randomly. Show that John could be wrong, stating a reason for your choice. Now, if you just skimmed over this question, you might think this would be a probability question because you see the word lottery. And so there might be some something involving probability there. But actually, what we're looking for is to show that this sequence of numbers has some pattern. And so to show that the numbers have a pattern, we need to use our knowledge of sequences. Um, so this is actually a sequences question. And in GCSEs, there are four types of sequences you need to be familiar with. There are arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, quadratic sequences, and Fibonacci sequences. Arithmetic sequences are just adding the same number over and over again. So this might be an arithmetic sequence where I'm adding 2 each time. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and I keep adding 2 to the previous number. Geometric sequences are where you multiply by a number. So we could start with 2 and multiply that by 2, and we get 4. Multiply that by 2, we get 8, 16, 32, etc. Quadratic sequences are where the numbers follow a quadratic equation. So you start with a quadratic equation such as x squared plus x plus 10 or something. You put 1 into that equation, 1 plus 1 plus 10, that would be 12. Then you put 2 into that equation, 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6, um, so you get 16. And uh, you keep doing that and you get a sequence of numbers. And then Fibonacci sequences are where you add the two previous terms. So if you start with 1, well 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 8, and uh, 13, etc. So you add the two previous terms to get the next term. Uh, so there are different types of sequences. And we can examine this pattern of numbers to see which sequence we're looking for. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this down. So we've got 3, 4, 7, 12, 19, and 28. The first thing we can do is to find the difference between each number. So 3 to 4, uh, there's a difference of 1. Then 4 to 7, there's a difference of 3. 7 to 12, the difference is 5. 12 to 19, the difference is 7. And 19 to 28, the difference is 9. So you can see we're not adding the same number. So this isn't going to be an arithmetic sequence. And we're not multiplying by the same number. So this is not going to be a geometric sequence either. And uh, because these numbers here in the first difference, this is what we generally call the first difference, then the difference between those numbers is fixed. So we can say this is going to be a quadratic sequence. We could check it's not a Fibonacci sequence either. So 3 plus 4, well, that's 7, but 4 plus 7 is not 12. So it's not going to be a Fibonacci sequence. Um, so this is a quadratic sequence. And to find out the, uh, to, to find the quadratic equation for a quadratic sequence, we need to find the second difference as well. Uh, so the second difference here is the difference between the numbers in the first difference. So the difference between 1 and 3, that's 2. The difference between 3 and 5, that's 2. 5 and 7 is 2, and 7 and 9 is 2. So in a quadratic sequence, this second difference will always be a fixed number. And now we have enough information to go ahead and find the equation for this sequence. So remember that the equation for a quadratic looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c where a is the coefficient of x squared and b is the coefficient of x and c is the number on the end. To find a, we take the second difference and we divide it by 2. Or another way of saying this is that 2a equals the second difference. And so a is going to be the second difference divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 here, well, that's going to be 1. So I know a equals 1. So I know the coefficient of x squared. And I also can find c which is the zeroth term. So C, we can say, will be the zeroth term. So what is the zeroth term? Well, if you look at this sequence of numbers, usually we would say 3 is the first term, and, uh, so, and 4 is the second term, and 7 is the third term, and so on. 
What we want to find to find C is the number before 3, so the zeroth term, the number before the first term. To find that, we can take this second difference, which is 2, and then find the first difference between the first term and the zeroth term. Well, what's 1 minus 2? That would be minus 1. So now I need to find what minus 1 equals 3. Well, that's going to be 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3. So the zeroth term here is 4. So we can say c equals 4. So now I have c in my quadratic equation. By the way, if you're wondering how it can go 4, 3, 4, 7, 12, well, that's what a quadratic looks like, doesn't it? So a quadratic curve goes down and then up. So that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing this, this pattern of a quadratic curve. And so we have c and now we need b. Well, here's a trick for quadratic sequences. You may not have seen before, I'm not sure, but we can say that uh, a plus b plus c must equal the first term. And if you think about that, if you take this quadratic equation and you substitute 1 into it, we would get, uh, well, x squared is 1, x is 1, so we would get a plus b plus c. So we can always say in a quadratic sequence that the first term will be a plus b plus c. So if we take this first term, we can say that a plus b plus c must equal 3. And if we substitute these values, 1 and 4, into this equation, uh, so a equals 1 and c is 4, that equals 3. You can see we can solve this for b. Um, so this is going to be b equal to 3 uh, take 1 from this side and minus 4 from this side, so it's going to be 3 minus 5, which is minus 2. So we can say that b equals minus 2, and we have all of the numbers in this quadratic equation, so we can say the equation will be x squared minus 2x plus 4. So we have found a pattern that these numbers follow, and because they follow a pattern, we could say maybe they're not random. They might still be random, it might just be a coincidence they follow this pattern, um, but it might not be, they might not have been chosen randomly. So we can say, so remember the question says, show that John could be wrong stating a reason for your choice. Uh, so we can say uh, something like, the numbers, the numbers might not have been chosen randomly because they follow the sequence x squared minus 2x plus 4. So that would be my answer to this question. I hope you found that question interesting. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.